Five, four, three, two, one. Space Mobile is go. AST announces not just one, but two upcoming launches. SpaceX signs a Monster Spectrum deal. And AST gets permission to expand its Texan base. Welcome to a very special AST Space Mobile News Roundup. On the 30th of September 1965, International Rescue blasted onto TV screens with the launch of Thunderbirds. Exactly 60 years later, another ambitious project is also getting ready to blast off, as AST Space Mobile announced the upcoming launch of the next two Bluebird satellites. These satellites will form a network that will eliminate cellular dead spots, something that could save many lives just as International Rescue aspired to do 60 years ago. With its advanced technology, AST is truly turning science fiction into modern engineering reality. In the announcement, AST shared that FM1, also known as Bluebird 6, is now flight ready and will be shipped for launch on the 12th of October. This launch will mark the start of AST's bold launch campaign that will see hundreds of satellites launched before the end of the decade. Shortly after FM1 launches, FM2, also known as Bluebird 7, is expected to ship to Cape Canaveral for a launch with SpaceX that's likely to take place in mid to late November. FM1 and FM2 are around 1,700 kilos heavier than the rest of the Block 2 Bluebirds will be, which means the Falcon 9 flight should have capacity, at least weight-wise, to carry another two Bluebirds as well. We'll have to wait for more updates from AST to know if it's going to be a rideshare or a solo mission carrying more than one Bluebird. A few days before this announcement, AST added a new Block 2 Bluebird section to its website, giving investors and partners a clearer look at their next generation hardware. The page also includes a new Block 2 Bluebird animation, which we've upscaled for you to enjoy. To support its growth, AST has been looking to expand by setting up a base in Florida. Construction on this new 30,000 square foot facility in Homestead will begin this month, after local approval was granted in September. AST was given an incentive of almost $200,000 to support its operations, because it'll be bringing 60 new jobs to the area at an average salary of $90,000. AST also received city council approval for its planned expansion of its headquarters in Midland, Texas. The company will now occupy the full facility owned by the Midland Development Corporation, renewing its lease and locking in additional space to support its future manufacturing efforts. AST has already created 200 jobs in the area and will be adding around 50 more as part of this agreement. On the partner front, the CEO of Vodafone Group, along with several other senior members of the company, visited AST's Midland facility in September. In December 2024, the two parties signed a definitive commercial agreement, which will see them work together as partners until at least 2034. Vodafone also released comms that referenced AST last month, stating that satellites will be key to helping the 2.6 billion people who remain offline to access vital opportunities and services. Vodafone Ireland followed up by confirming that it plans to introduce satellite-backed direct-to-device emergency connectivity in the near future. The service will allow anyone on any network to call the emergency services, even if there is no terrestrial signal available. Public safety agencies will also be able to use this satellite-enabled service when mobile networks go down. In order to deploy its satellites, AST is heavily reliant on its launch partner Blue Origin. New Glenn, which is Blue Origin's biggest rocket, suffered another setback last month, with its second launch being delayed again. The launch was originally planned for spring 2025, but was most recently rescheduled to the 29th of September. This setback means it's unlikely New Glenn will launch more than twice in 2025 
Regarding its 2026 launch plans, New Glenn's Vice President of Mission Management, Laura McGuinness, shared that the company is working to support multiple New Glenn launches a month from next year, while speaking on a panel at the World Space Business Week in September. An event AST's president, Scott Vichnyrtsky, also attended. In terms of the competition, it's been a big month for SpaceX and Starlink. Firstly, SpaceX is spending $17 billion to buy H-Block and AWS-4 Spectrum from EchoStar. This will give Starlink's directed device network a huge boost once it has the technology needed to put the Spectrum to use. We're working on a deep dive insights video exploring this deal, which members of our channel will be able to watch 24 hours early. If you're not already a member, hit the join button to see what we're offering. Memberships start from less than $2 a month and are vital to support our production of AST Space Mobile videos. Here's a clip from the All In Summit, in which Elon Musk explains that hardware changes will be needed before SpaceX can use this spectrum. What will that look like in a year or two? This is a kind of a long-term thing. Uh, it, it, it will allow SpaceX to deliver high bandwidth connectivity directly from the satellites to the phones. But uh, there are hardware changes that need to happen in the phones. So the, since these frequencies are not supported in current phones, the chipset has to be modified to in, in add these frequencies. Um, and that probably is a two-year time frame. So the phones that um, are able to use the spectrum that was acquired probably start shipping in around two years. And, and then we also need to build the satellites that are going to communicate on those frequencies. So in parallel, we're building the satellites and working with the handset makers to add these frequencies to the phones. Another big update given by SpaceX's VP of Engineering was that certain compatible phones will now support WhatsApp, X and MAP satellite data services through Starlink. With the current tech, this will be a kilobytes per second service only, but with the new satellites that Elon mentioned in the previous clip, they hope to match AST's plans to deliver a megabytes per second service. This type of service would be capable of higher bandwidth activities, like watching connected space videos for example. There wasn't much change in terms of analyst price targets in September. On the 9th of the month, UBS revised its price target down from $62 per share to $43, citing the competition from Starlink as the main reason for this. Other than that change, there were no other updates. The stock closed September flat, finishing on a price of $49.08, just 14 cents higher than where it closed in August. October will likely be a very different month for ASTS, given there are a lot of catalysts taking place to excite investors. So what are some of those catalysts to keep an eye on in October? Well, the biggest is the shipment of FM1 to India, expected on the 12th of October. That satellite will likely launch in early to mid-November, so we expect AST will announce the launch date sometime during October. We also expect to find out the launch date for FM2, and will be keenly awaiting the announcement of whether this too will be a single satellite launch mission, or if another two bluebirds will be joining FM2 on its ride to space. Crossroads Capital are preparing to release a 70-page deep dive report into AST Space Mobile, which is something else to look out for in October. We'd also like to get a construction update on AST's new homestead facility, which is meant to be breaking ground in October. That was your Space Mobile News Update for September from Connected Space. You can join our channel to stay up to date with everything AST Space Mobile.